Some time ago, a, a postdoc in my lab, his name is Sender Aymani, I first met him in, in Bangalore in India, the son of a rice farmer from a, a small poor village, came to my lab and he was doing work on this, in this general area. And he was interested in the question of what happens when an epithelial cell goes through an EMT, that is a mesenchymal cell. For him, uh, the question was, what's the product when an epithelial cell goes through an EMT? And if you listen to everything I said now, uh, until now, and take it seriously, which itself might be a mistake, then you would imagine uh, that an epithelial cell makes a mesenchymal cell, and a mesenchymal cell is, in all, by all standards, a fibroblast. Fibroblasts are all over their body. They're standard hardware, connective tissue cells, which uh, enable our many of our tissues to hold themselves together. And in fact, this question was, the answer to this question was so obvious that one might consider it inane. Um, but fortunately, he didn't ask my opinion. He didn't ask what I thought of this question, uh, uh, posing this question, um, which is good because I often tell people in my lab to run off on their own and not consult me, consult me since my preconceptions may sometimes sterilize their otherwise rather uh, substantial creativity. So he undertook a fingerprint test. Here are um, uh, connective tissue cells, bona fide fibroblasts, and here are epithelial cells that have been forced through an EMT. So these are the products of the EMT I talked about before. And these are bona fide fibroblasts. And as you can see from this fingerprint test here, they look different. The products of the EMT are not standard off-the-shelf fibroblasts. They look very different by this fingerprint test, whose details needn't occupy us at present. So he concluded the following, that the product of an EMT is not a fibroblast. Of course, that raised the question, what is the product of the EMT? If an epithelial cell makes a mesenchymal cell, what kind of mesenchymal cell is it? And then he went back to his desk drawer and he looked at a microscopic section of a human mammary duct that he had uh, done together with uh, a surgeon with whom we work at the Brigham and Women's Hospital. Here's a cross section of a human mammary duct. And what he saw here in regions of this mammary duct were cells that seemed to have undergone an EMT, but this was a normal mammary duct. This wasn't some kind of tumor. Um, this, uh, this wasn't a wounded tissue, this was a normal tissue, and uh, perhaps more importantly, these cells were residing in locations where one knew stem cells could be found. So he then made the speculation that, the following speculation, a daring and, and a rather improbable speculation, that the product of the EMT I told you about before is not a mesenchymal cell, it's a stem cell. And this conclusion, this speculation, promptly earned him the derision and ridicule of all of his lab mates. Of course, I only heard about this later, because what if you have somebody in your lab and you're working on two different subjects? You're working on the EMT, and you're working on cancer uh, stem cells. And somebody in the lab says, well, they're really the same thing. The EMT actually creates stem cells. If you hear something like that, then almost always you think that this is the product of a fertile imagination, an overly ambitious, um, opportunistic postdoc who wants to describe an entire plan of all modern science by uniting everything together. And therefore one is skeptical, as were his lab mates. But he soon shut them up.